Hello, my soccer university review of match day four. A little bit later than usual, but you know, that's how it works out for me. And I probably will, it will go in this rhythm uh, going forward as well. In any case, those pesky Scandinavians, don't you think? Uh, I mean, we had Sweden getting a huge win, as we will see over Spain. We had Norway um, getting points off the Netherlands, probably even almost deserving a win. And. Uh, can argue about that. And then of course Denmark rolling over Scotland like nothing. So I mean three Scandinavian nations and then uh, another one that has has not even played is also here among the winners. I'm talking about Finland of course. They have not played but everything played into their cards in many ways so that they even increase their chances of qualifying a teeny little bit. Before we look at chances of what happened I, I briefly want to run through the games. Kazakhstan, Ukraine, Ukraine again threw away a game, a game that they should have settled uh, even by half time, second half, something like, like that. Yaremchuk, wonderful early goal uh, to get things going, then they control the game, however they concede an equalizer uh, through Valulin and then desperation sets in, however they get the in stoppage time, Sikan, uh, Messi goal, gets the 2-1 and you think Ukraine is gonna get that win. Haha, they didn't count on Valulin, who with basically the last kick of the game equalizes. A game that Ukraine should never have lost. Um, however, you know, you can see now it's missed chance because France also cannot manage a win. They only play 1-1 one, one at home uh, to Bosnia, where they even found themselves down to an Aiden Dzeko goal. Uh, then I think Griezmann, who just had moved to Atletico Madrid, I'm gonna do a transfer video pro, pro, pro before the leagues get going again uh, because this has been such, such a remarkable transfer window that I want to talk more just than Messi and Ronaldo. So yeah, he gets an equalizer, however Koundé gets sent off and France cannot really find a win or any punch. A uh, rather disappointing performance for France who, and I need to know that, have played in Strasbourg which is not where I usually, it's usually start to France so maybe they're not the traveling circles like many other nations. I already said Denmark and Scotland, I, Denmark just turned it on like that after 15 minutes, scored two goals uh, and this guy Dom scored. I mean that I, I saw uh, some Sampdoria play Milan and I thought Damsgaard is still at Sampdoria, no one is picking him really up. I mean this is a mega talent honestly. The Euros that he has, that he still manages to play for some, some Sampdoria, there is a player to be had for sure. I think some Sampdoria will make quite some money off him, but Denmark, the class of this group, uh, bar none because they actually play up to their potential. Uh, which is something I cannot say about Austria, who just, yeah, the game had to be delayed because of a drone. Uh, there was a, like a half hour delay because a drone was hovering around, not having any political message, it was just ho ho hovering around there uh, until they had uh, fig fig figured that one out, then the game starts and yeah. Moldova not showing up, not showing much, not being, not, not, not even having an effort really on goal, but Austria making every effort possible to not score. It's like the Euros, the games against Ukraine and against uh, Italy never happened. And that's again galling. And yeah, I know there's not much to play for for Austria because you are pretty much qualified for that playoff with having that group win and being in good position there. You probably even at a walking pace should make just based on the quality of your squad should make second place in this group everything else is unacceptable uh and i think if you will play up to the potential you could still make a run to win this group because that's it in the playoff it will be hard i actually think it would be better to get this uh, second place and get a low and get loads of points in there because the seeding will probably matter uh, where you end, end up. But you know, the way this is going, Austria will just scrape into a second place and then uh, they will get in the playoff path with Spain. I I'm getting ahead of myself. So I was glad that I actually did not watch that game, only the last uh, a little bit I got and then from all the reviews. I watched Norway against the Netherlands and I have to say this was a rather entertaining match where the Dutch largely controlled the match as you would expect. However, for once Norway had a good defensive performance and the frontline Hauge, Odegaard and especially Holland 
caused all kinds of trouble. And the first goal that Norway scored, uh, the first goal was scored by Norway through Holland. Uh, you know, you see the Dutch defenders really want to be there, want to uh, uh, try to take care of him, but they cannot, and he touches and goes in. I mean, the battle of uh, Van Dijk Holland that was uh, the most enticing thing in the entire uh, game. Up until the point, I actually thought that the Dutch were largely better team, had more chances, but with a 1-0 lead, so suddenly the Dutch started to hang back. I mean, they tried to answer immediately, but then it was really uh, going at a slower pace. However, it was then Klaassen, who a little bit out of nowhere could equalize. Second half, I think it started slower than uh, the Dutch could score, but then Holland hit also the post with another great attack. The way Oedegaard sets him up, and we just he just has the ball there, and he knows one touch, he goes on the inside of the post and out. So, uh, Norway could well have won that one. Yes, the Dutch were probably the slightly better team overall, but... Um the group remains tight and it remains especially tight because Turkey also doesn't get a win over Montenegro. They had a tunnel lead and were cruising. Cengiz Ünder, Yaziki, everything fine. Then they concede a slop, sloppy goal through Mar Marsic in the 40th, but then Turkey actually has more chances to make it 3-1 and can keep uh, Montenegro largely at bay. Uh, the big problem is there is a free kick given deep into stoppage time and Radunovic converts into the 97th minute. And that was a backbreaker for Turkey. Because if they would have won that one, I think they would have taken control of that group. And now, as we will see, it, it remains still very much a very, very tight group. Um, also taking control of the group was Portugal, who found themselves 1-0 down to Ireland. Um, with Ronaldo missing already a penalty in the first half and Ireland scoring a header. Uh, in the in the 45th and then I have not seen the situation but seemingly there was a bust up between O'Shea and um, Ronaldo I think it was um, where Ronaldo probably could have sent been sent and of everyone agrees if it was the other way around uh, the Irish defender would have walked so yeah a little bit star power however it's Ronaldo who takes all the headlines by scoring an equalizer I mean two great headers an equalizer in the 89th and then he gets the winner deep into stops stoppage time breaking Irish hearts along the way and now uh, he has the alone top scorer in all international soccer with 111 goals to me that record doesn't count much because he has over 150 games look at Gerd Müller 68 goals in 62 games it's still better uh, even Ferenc Puskas with 82 goals and 83 goal games is should be considered a better goal, goal scorer so uh, this whole record uh, scraping yes it is impressive uh, but I think that he plays 150 games for Portugal. This is the more impressive uh, mark. And then, yeah, I I didn't want to say it in the Ronaldo. Oh, I, I want to say it in the Ronaldo video. I forgot. But I mean, uh, the other thing is that uh, this whole sexual assault affair, that how this suddenly dissolved. That's, I think, what people should, should, should be talk, 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 talking about. And not his records and those bogus absolute records should be relative records that you should be talking about that i would be more, way more willing the, uh, but the one thing i have to give him credit when you look at his uh goal scoring tally uh in competitive game versus friendly games he scores in when it when it when it matters of course also as i've seen european qualifying there are a lot of no names in there where it's probably easier to score against. Russia Croatia was a rather disappointing nil nil draw but also that group uh, remains wide open. We come of course to the big one. Sweden against Spain. I and I have to give again so much credit to, to, to my wife. When I don't know which games to pick and yesterday there were three to pick. Sweden, Spain, Italy, Bulgaria and Hungary, England. I was actually leaning towards the third, third one but I said okay I don't know. Italy, Bulgaria would, be, would have been the normal choice but I would have been proper in all the batch by a bad choice either, but I kind of expected no other good game out of there. And my wife also said, nah, don't watch Bulgaria. Um, and then she said, nah, go for Sweden, Spain. And I thought, nah, this might be a poor face. No, it was every, everything, but this was an excellent, excellent game. And uh, according to UEFA, it had two goals in the fifth minute. Um, Sweden actually started strong, was very offensive, and I was all, I wanted to yell at my wife, hey, Sweden is, is trying to commit suicide. Didn't say it. And then just on the next uh, attacking wave from Spain, 
they scored through Carlos Soler. I think he made his first game for Spain. But right off the kickoff, and again, Soler is, was losing the ball. So, I mean, he has a uh, foot in both games. Uh, the ball is then played to Isaac, who just with a thumb throwing sword equalizes right there. Then it was a rather even game with Spain clearly having control, but um, and, and actually playing quite nicely up until like the 25th when we saw again these U shaped attacks. However, there's one thing I Spain should have had a penalty. Uh, how this was waved off, uh, I don't really get. This was a penalty. Uh, I know, uh, I think, uh, who, who was the ref? English ref Taylor. And um, he saw it, he judged it, so I know it will not, not be over. But not only is the player grabbed, the shirt is pulled, and then there are two defenders. I mean, it was really bringing down. I, I honestly think it should have been a penalty for Spain. However, it was not to be. And then second half, Spain again trying. However, it is uh, Sweden who scores the goal. And it was thanks to the excellent work of Kulusevski. He was the man of the match there. He didn't score a goal, but the way he assisted the class and goal was already outstanding. But he had many good uh, situations before that. Also Forsberg. I mean, he had a situation in the first half where I thought, if he shoots earlier, he might get a goal there. Those two, Kulusevski and Forsberg, were absolutely outstanding. In addition to a really solid defense. So Sweden get the 2-1 through Gleason, and honestly, I do not remember then a good chance for Spain. Nah, I shouldn't say that. They had real two good chances that uh, Rob and Olsen saved, but it seemed rather safe overall for Sweden, because again, Spain falling again in back into this pattern where uh, they just cannot break it down. I mean, when he brought on Adama Traore, yes, he can go past defenders and flying in, but he's no threat on goal because he's then... Uh, Although he tried to pass it, the passes were either too, uh, not exact enough, it was just not clicking up front. And Sweden gets a huge win that will put them firmly into the driving seat to uh, grab the fixed qual qualification sp spot. And at this moment, at this very moment, it seems that Spain at the next World Cup might be a pipe dream. And that is rather, rather uh, surprising. As I said, Italy, Bulgaria, um, Italy took the lead through Chiesa. Had chances, but from what I hear, also a little bit complacent because they thought the win will come. They, they, the equalizer uh, through Despot of an Iliev was a really nicely played attack. And the way Iliev co converts, however, I thought Donnarumma did not really look that well. Uh, but that was the only attack that Bulgaria had all game. Italy, no. Nope. Just could not find the winner. Just could not find, find, find the winner. Thought the winner will come auto, auto, automatically. Was not to be. Wake up call because you will have to play Switzerland soon. And that's a game you rather win now. Because with that draw, you might have put yourself into a teeny bit of trouble. Belgium avoids all trouble. Estonia scores two goals. The first one and the last one. The problem is in between. Belgium score five through uh, Van Aken, Lukaku twice, of course. Uh, he has to get, uh, get on a sheet. I think Salah makers from Milan uh, even hit the... Um, uh, Bar at one point, Witzel uh, scores, and then I think a David and uh, Fouquet uh, also scores. So uh, rather easy for that. Rather easy it was also for Hung Hunger England. I'm sorry, I didn't see anything of Andorra San Marino, which is the pick of all of these games. Um, first half, rather boring. I have to say, I did like the color matchup, although I would have preferred England to play in the classic uh, kit. But uh, didn't look bad. Two, 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 two hours. But once they got going, England was ruthless. Uh, Sterling really nicely taken shot. Then Kane, uh, it had a deflection, but he got his head in there. 63rd minute, the game was over. And then uh, Gulagin made two, two mixed same, uh, mistakes on the goal of Maguire in the 69th. And then even Declan Rice, that, that, that looked really bad. Of course, it has to be said, once Sterling scores his goal, the abuse he received from the Hungarian fans and uh, I assume there was also quite some racial abuse in there, uh, was not something we want to see. And what I don't want to see at Hung Hunger Games anymore are all these Carpathian League black shirts right behind the goal. But I know the government likes that. And yeah, don't want to say this so much, but those guys do not belong in the stadium. They are just there to cause trouble. Poland with a 4-1 win over Al Albania. And then we have two interesting games. Germany, I thought when I saw, saw, saw the result, this was rather uh, meager. Only 2-0 against Liechtenstein. We had to play in St. Gallen. It's not too far away from Liechtenstein, but still, they usually play in Vaduz. So I was surprised about that. Um, yeah, 
Uh, the first hand of Flick's first game was maybe not the one that uh, the German supporters wanted to see. However, 2-0 they get uh, Timo Werner getting the goal and then Leroy Sané, so two of the most unheralded players in there. And then the big one, North Macedonia against Armenia, that was 1v2 right there. Uh, North Macedonia should have won it because Alioski had a shot that was going right in, but his own player deflects it out. So yeah, uh, ends 0-0, which plays into Germany's hands. So, uh, quickly here the standings. I mean, if Portos, Portugal, Serbia uh, seem to be the class in Group A, Sweden now in firm control, and we see how much is in the expected standings uh, in Group B now. And Italy still very much in control uh, in Group C, having done two games more than Switzerland. So if Switzerland would win those two games, they actually would find themselves ahead of Italy, and it will come very much down to head to head. But Italy is still in control of their own destiny, as is France, because everyone else plays only a draw. If Ukraine would have won any of these games. Games, they would be in contention there. No, nope, they don't manage and I think they got even a draw uh, at France and that's why Finland suddenly just give Finland two wins and they're at eight points right up there with France having a teeny bit of chance of qualifying there as well. Belgium uh, right ahead the Czechs already putting pressure on Wales but again uh, Wales having two games behind and I think they've beat the Czechs so um, we have to see that. Denmark will have it easy as I said Austria will cruise to a second place. Turkey, Netherlands, Montenegro, Norway. Ice is as tight as can be. The Netherlands just the faintest of favorites in there. Uh, and a similar tight group is Group H between Croatia, Russia. I'm not sure if Slovakia and Slovenia can get into the go uh, into there, especially Slovenia, but Slovakia may have to play uh, something there. England cruising uh, and Armenia and still ahead of Germany. That's rather remarkable. Uh, here are also the teams that are in the playoffs, but you know, this is just at this very moment, if it ended today and there are so many uneven things like Switzerland on two games, expected standings are needed. And yeah, I I actually want to focus, focus on the graphs that show how the chances of qualifying developed. And it tells a story that Portugal is very much on the way to, to the World Cup, although Serbia will have a say in that, but Serbia will have to go to Portugal, probably win there. Sweden, you see the flip-flop. That win over Sweden was huge because now with a game in hand, they could win that one against Greece and have five points ahead of Spain. So Spain does not have their own destiny, the destiny in their hands any, anymore. Greece, all of Spain will hope that Greece will get something off Sweden. So has, has to see. Italy, as you see, that draw did not hurt their chances much, but they could improve them, uh, could have improved them a little bit. France. Yeah, all those draws play in France's hand, but still the chances decreased. Belgium cruising, Denmark cruising, Austria, yeah, I don't want to say much more. Uh, and then the Netherlands territory group. The Dutch actually putting themselves into more control with that draw than they would have thought because Turkey really threw it away. That win, uh, if Tur Turkey would have won, they would, they would have been in control of their own destiny uh, and even the expected standings that they would have been the top favorite. Croatia over Russia still, England the highest chance of qualifying so far. It's only between Poland and Hungary for the second spot. And yeah, Germany also looking still strong and Armenia might get a, a surprise second place in, the, in, in this group for sure. As for the teams to, in, in, in the playoffs, we see here the second place teams. Switzerland probably will get the top uh, shoot at the moment, get the top spot in Russia, Serbia, Spain, Turkey and Poland would be the seeded teams. Uh, the unseeded teams would be Czechs and the Hung Hungarians. Lots to, to be played, but note that Spain is in there and no one will want to play Spain. I mean, this is in any case not been easy path. Coming up, we have on Saturday, Ukraine against France looks like an interesting matchup. I actually, um, Slovakia, Croatia potentially. The games in Group G, I mean, Netherlands, Montenegro is one, I don't know. Um, I actually will probably watch Israel-Austria. That seems to be the most interesting one and I hope that Austria avoids any uh, trouble there. Belgium, Czech Republic, uh, probably a big one there and Switzerland, Italy. I think that's for me the game to watch. Um, on Sunday, I think all the others should be rather foregone conclusions. So yeah, this was it. A long video from match day uh, four from Euro from the Euro qual qualifiers. Lots of things already happening, and yeah, look looking forward. I actually think that we will see a few surprises coming coming up. I'm pretty sure about that.
Anyway, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye! Hey, just in case you enjoyed this video, here are some videos and playlists that you actually might enjoy too. Also, please consider following me on social media and actually subscribe to my channel so that you stay updated with everything that happens in my SOFA universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.